Man sleeping in his car says tenant owes more than $31,000 and will not leave his rental property. Ontario government's trying to speed up the tenancy hearings, but is struggling to do so. The story is, this man's name is Marco. He doesn't give his full name because he's a mortgage broker. Uh, he had two homes. He went through a split in his relationship. Yeah. She took one property. He took the other. Since then... Took the wrong one, Marco. <laughs> <laughs> Don't do him like that. He's still sleeping in his car, Chandler. <laughs> Sorry. Okay? <laughs> Since January... He has been unable to reclaim his home. Also, the tenants have not paid rent during that time. So he's like, I am paying all the housing expenses, the mortgage, the property taxes, everything there. I'm drowning in it, so I can't actually afford to go rent or buy another house. But I do own a home, and I can't get in to my property. Um, And he said he's filed complaints about both the tenants to the landlord board. um, But because there's a giant backlog from the pandemic, he's just in queue like everybody else. and And he's homeless. Yeah. Right. So, and it, here's these things like everyone wants to be so, you know, binary. You must be all this thing or all another thing. Well, we're all really quick to line up and support unhoused individuals, but everyone also wants to hate landlords. So here's a nice, here's a nice uh, uh, paradox or, or whatever it is for for someone out there who wants to be so ignorant and blind to nuance. Say, okay, you want to hate landlords, but what about this unhoused person? Like he's legitimately been unhoused because his private property is being squatted in by someone who is breaking the law, right? Like it's not a criminal offense, but if you, you know, if you break the rules of effectively a squatter in his home, it's a hundred percent a squatter in his home. Um, so whether it's trespassing or it's just even violation of tenancy law, um, you know, and it's caused this person to be homeless. And still there will be people who will just post, like, screw that guy anyway. That serves him right for trying to profiteer off, blah, blah, blah. Oh, I guess he should have made a smart investment. Like, it's not dissimilar to that other story we talked about where someone went through a split, right? Yeah. And, and you know, needed to move back into their private property. We still do have something um, to protect property rights, private property rights in Canada, last I checked. And this is enraging. Yeah. And the fact that this person isn't getting more support because it's the same trolls online just ripping them apart. 100%. He's eight months into this process. He's hired a paralegal and he said all that they've been able to get because there's no ever phone numbers for tenancy board and you can never speak to anyone directly. He said all he's gotten is the automated response emails. Like when you submit a form, they just keep submitting forms, paralegal submitting forms and all they get is automated responses. This is supposed to be a three month process to be able to reclaim your property. Most people say it's a minimum of a year before you even get close to starting that process. Um, and yeah. I, again, I don't, again, we're not trying to make this a thing about just like feel bad for the landlords because there's lots of stuff going both ways. Um, but I, I think it's good that landlords are starting to speak out a little bit and kind of make their side known as well because it was all tenants for a long time. And that's how I think a lot of these rules and changes kind of landed in place. Yeah. Uh, and so t- landlords need to speak up and be like, hey, we're getting trampled over here. Uh, yeah. And there's a lot of smaller people that really can't do much about it. And if we can get to a situation where, an injustice like this, which happens to be at the expense uh, of the landlord, can be remedied in a timely fashion, then the same will be true for any tenants who are being mistreated. So a strong tenancy board that is fast, that has authority, that, that can penalize violators, is what everyone wants, both landlords and tenants. It's for the good of both sides. Um, so when you see something like this going on, it's important that regardless if you're a landlord or a tenant, you advocate for what's right and what's wrong and for an efficient tenancy board in your area. Try not to be so biased. What's that? Try not to be Try so biased. Try not to be so biased, man. I, I so have dumb. one, this is a bit of an aside, but I have one client who is basically like, well, if tenancy board is not going to help out or kind of work with me, I'm just going to do it the way I want to do it. And I'm not going to yeah. get super explicit on what he's done, but he's always gotten his units back. Um, whether it means going and visiting the tenants uh, quite abruptly or literally just removing doors, windows and heating systems um, and turning them into effectively like uninhabitable spaces. And yeah. he's like, they don't pay rent. They don't leave. They don't follow any of the rules. I'm not going to follow any of the rules. Yeah. It becomes, it, it erodes into vigilantism or whatever you want to call it um, on both sides. Mm-hmm. So it's, it's just terrible. But what else you got? 